Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. We continue that breaking news coverage out of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Some stunning and very disturbing news that the judge just related to everyone watching this case and everyone in the courtroom that there's been an incident with some members of the media following the jury bus. The jury bus that uh, they're trying to protect from any outside influence. Uh, and apparently, as the judge reported, some members of the media who reportedly worked for MSNBC were following the bus, even made a traffic violation. One individual by the name of James J. Morrison and was stopped by police. The incident was reported, and uh, now they have been banned from the courthouse. And it, it raises such a, a serious question that we want to talk further about, and that is, where is the respect for our judicial process? If the judicial process cannot be respected by members of the media, by members of the public, by anyone, then where will we be in the United States of America? I want to bring in my guest analyst, who is a judge in the state of Georgia, also a practicing private criminal defense attorney and someone who has served as a prosecutor. Judge Kimberly Bando is still with me. Uh, judge, what did you think when you heard what the judge said? I, I couldn't believe it. And the only thing that I could think of, like, are you trying to follow them to see who they are, where they're going, where they live? Like, I can't imagine what you need to follow the jury for. Because I know even in the courthouse, when I when I have trials and I'm as an attorney, I don't even want to ride on the elevator with the jury because I don't want the appearance that there's anything at all that I've influenced. So we, me and my client, we'll wait and we'll let you, the jury get on a separate elevator and we'll walk around down the hallway because you don't even want to be seen with the jury. But to actually get in your car and follow the bus and run the red light, like, what was the intent of that? And that's what I really want to know. Like, what were you trying to do exactly? Why do you need to know where they're parking and where they're going? For what reason? You can find all of that out at the conclusion of a trial, not during the middle of a trial. Exactly, Judge. You hit the nail on the head. The why. For what purpose? They had absolutely no reason in the world to be doing that. No reason that is proper. You know, sure, out of curiosity, someone may want to know, but out of respect for the process, you right. don't do that. And members of the media know better not to do that. Afterwards, as you so astutely pointed out, Judge, it's fair game. Afterwards, after a trial is concluded, if you want to try to catch the members of the jury walking out and say, hey, would, would you consider talking to us? Would you consider telling us what happened? That is to be expected. I mean, courts plan for that. They know it happens all the time. But during the deliberation process, you're following the bus, breaking the laws to get to the bus? I, I, I am appalled as a lawyer and as a journalist, I, I couldn't be more disturbed and saddened by what I just heard, Judge. Yeah, I, I mean, I literally, my mouth dropped when I realized what he was saying that, because I, I really, like, what was the point of following the bus that the court has taken such great lengths to protect their identity, and now you're following them to see their personal lives before they have finished deliberating on this case? It's just, it wasn't appropriate, and I can't imagine any explanation that would provide any reasonable explanation why you would follow the juror when everybody's trying to protect them until the conclusion of this case so that they're not influenced. Exactly, Judge Kimberly. And it, it raises that bigger question of where is the respect for the judicial process, right? Where is the respect for it? And, and if, if we think that we can influence juries with threats of violence or with threats of exposing their identities or with what, what, what have you, uh, our, our system is going to crumble. I mean, it's, it's always been so sacrosanct in America. And in, in, in recent you know, months, years, we, we've seen these attempts by various individuals to try to influence that process. And it, it really scares me. I, I'd, I'd love to know your take on that, please. Yeah, and so I think that really is what the beauty of our country is. You're innocent until you're proven guilty, and you get the jury of, you know, to listen to the evidence and make a decision about it, and you respect it or you appeal it. And so in other places, it's like you're guilty until you prove you're innocent. So I think our judicial system is so special. And if it works the way it's intended to work, it, it I mean, it would serve its purpose, although nothing is absolute, nothing is perfect. But ideally, this is what you want. And so you don't need to go, and I just, I can't even, I'm so baffled and lost for words. You don't need to go and try to influence the jury. Like, what are you doing? Leave them alone until they make their decision.
Exactly. That, that is so improper. There is no reason in the world that they needed to be following that bus or trying to presumably ascertain information about them, right? Mm -hmm. You follow them to see where they're going, right? I mean, we can make that logical inference from these facts as laid out by the police and what the judge said, um, and that is a big problem. I, I, I could, I'm sure, um, it, well, and, and you know, and this is a really good question, Judge. I'm just gonna, as I'm, I'm thinking out, out loud here, but mm -hmm. do you think the judge let the jury know about this? Like, maybe they were unaware of this, right, because the bus is, is all closed mm -hmm. in, the judge called it a sealed box, so they can't see. Um, I would think he would not have told them about this. Would you no, agree? I, yeah, I would definitely agree that you don't want to tell them and get them alarmed. But what he might just do, like a word of caution to not let them know, but just to let them know to make sure that, you know, just, hey, stay mindful as you have been when you're leaving and coming and going. And if you see anything, just report it to me. So you say just enough to kind of let them know to be on guard, but not enough to scare them. That's really great, Judge. So you would let them know to, hey, please remember this is an open dialogue with the court. You tell us if something is concerning. Right. Wow. Uh, Judge Kimberly Bando, I'm so glad we have you on the show at this time to help us uh, unpack this. I want to go back and revisit that moment now. We have the tape from what happened just a few moments ago, uh, moments ago, excuse me, in the courtroom in Kenosha. There's been conversation around this morning. We had invested, we had asked the uh, media coordinator to uh, determine uh, possible whereabouts of uh, certain persons. Uh, because we received a report this morning uh, from the Kenosha Police Department that uh, last evening, well, and let me just set this background here. Um, the jury in this case is being uh, transported from a different location in a bus with the uh, windows uh, uh, covered so that they don't have to look at any aren't exposed to any signs by one side or another or interest uh, in the case. And uh, so it's a, I'm gonna call it a sealed bus. And uh, that's been done every day. And then they're brought here to this building. And um, last evening, um, a person who identified himself as James G. Morrison and who claimed that he was a producer with NBC News employed uh, for N MSNBC um, and under the supervision of a person, what's going on? Jansen, oh, okay. Uh, under the supervision of someone named Irene Bayon in New York uh, for MSNBC. Uh, the police, when they stopped him because he was following at a distance of about a <laughs> a black and uh, went through a red light, pulled him over and inquired of him what was going on and he gave that information and stated that he had been instructed by Ms. Bayon in New York to follow the jury bus. Uh, the matter is uh, under further investigation at this point um, and the media has asked questions about it. That's the latest I have. Um, and he was ticketed for uh, uh, violating a traffic control signal. Uh, he's not here today from what I'm told. And um, I have instructed that no one from MSNBC News will be permitted in this building for the duration of this trial. Uh, this is a very serious matter and I don't know what the ultimate truth of it is, but absolutely it, it would go without much thinking that someone who is following a, the jury bus, uh, that is a very, ex it's extremely serious matter and uh, will be referred to the uh, proper authorities for further action. Thank you. And we just got word from our field team, some clarification on who this ban covers. We are told that it covers only MSNBC, individuals working for MSNBC, not individuals working for NBC.
Uh, so that is the distinction uh, we want to make here with that new information. Let's see if we can dig in a little further, uh, knowing the name of this individual who identified himself as a producer with MSNBC, James J. Morrison. I want to bring in Court TV anchor Ted Rollins, who's standing by for us live outside of the courthouse. Uh, Ted, I, I know you've, you've run into lots of members of the media. You've worked in network television for a long, long time. And uh, tell me, have you seen uh, this, this James J. Morrison or know anything of him? Oh, yeah, I know Jamie Morrison quite well, um, um, Julie, and um, I can't say enough about him as an individual. He is an upstanding uh, person, and I know exactly what happened here. I, I haven't talked to Jamie, but um, this is a longstanding pr a practice. When a story gets to a certain level, the network morning shows go into a different level, a mode, a different mode, if you will, and they are uh, just very aggressive. And one of the tactics... Um, and, and you can think what you want about the tactics um, is to try to locate information about jurors, um, personal information, just, just identifications so that they can, at the end of a trial, then go to those people and say, hey, do you want to be on, um, in, in this case, the Today Show? Do you want to be on in this? They they do he was not going after them uh, to influence them or would follow them home likely um, he was instructed as he told the judge by um, someone in new york to get info on the panel so that we can then reach out to these people and see if they want to join us the night the you know the day after a verdict it has happened in every trial that i've covered that has gotten to a level that this one has gotten to and um at its worst, it is despicable. Um, the the way that people go after information. On the other hand, they're literally just trying to get information about these people who may have something um, very unique and, and have an insight. They want to speak. So the motivation was competition. And um, as far as Jamie Morrison is concerned, um, I, I can't think of a, a, a nicer person that I've met over the years. And as you said, I, I know a lot of people. Um, and, and it sounds like he was doing his job. He was instructed to do that uh, from someone higher up. Right, Ted. We heard the name mentioned by the judge, Irene Bayon. Uh, in um, New York is, is what w was said. Uh, does that name ring a bell? No, and uh, again, this is if, if, if this was a, uh, an incident of that, uh, oh my gosh, NBC, what have they done? This happens all the time, and it has for decades um, and in situations like this. It is, it's aggressive um, news gathering, and it's on a level that is definitely toes the line uh, of legality and and uh, we'll see how this one turns out but um it's um just you know it is what it is and uh, I, I don't want to defend the practice but i'm just giving you some insight on what the motivation is um, it is to get those jurors on the show the next day after a verdict and that is exactly what was going on Sure. Well, no, and I understand that, Ted, absolutely, and our viewers know that. But the insight you're able to provide is really, really helpful um, because not many people spend their careers working in network news, and, and you have. You've had such an illustrious career. You know so many people. You're beloved in the business. And to, to understand that the motivation uh, very well may not have been anything that was sinister or, um, you know, with, with a, a bad intent. No one's assuming that, but it can violate the respect for the process when we want jury deliberations to be free from any outside influence. And it's a really sad day in America when news competition is interfering with that, right? Yes, if indeed it was interfered with, um, I, you know, there would be no contact in this scenario with the jurors and that individual. They're, lo they're lo looking for their license plates, what they're looking for. And um, then they'll run, they'll, they'll, they'll find that, their ID after, from there. Um, so, well, does it, if they notice someone following them, yeah, then absolutely. And that's where it gets sticky. And that's why the Judge Schrader was so upset. You, you know, you've got the jury bus that is... Um, which that's another point that I was um, impressed with. They've covered the jury bus so that the jurors can't read the different signs outside the courthouse when they're coming in and out. I think that's brilliant that they're doing that. Um, but yeah, you're right. You know, if, if there's this sense of like, who's that car following us and what's that, what's happening? Absolutely. That 
could influence and could change the process. And that's why Judge Schrader was so upset. And that's why it is serious. And that's why it's being investigated. Most certainly. Uh, Ted, this insight is really helpful. I know we're going to continue talking about it. We're going to take a break before we go back to Georgia. But thank you so much for that live update.